Okay. Um, I will start by um, going over again the last thing from last week, which was the, the composition operation on open games. So, um, so an open game from 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 an open game G from some pair of sets x plus x minus to y plus y minus consisted of three pieces of data. One was a set, which is called sigma, the strategy profiles. One was a function, which I'll call g of blank, going from sigma to the lenses, going from x plus x minus to y plus y minus. So this is the set of pairs of functions where one goes from x plus to y plus, and one goes from x plus times y minus to x minus. And then the third thing was a, another function, the equilibrium, or, all right, this is a relation between um, sigma and the lenses from one, one to x plus x minus times the lenses from y plus y minus to one one where this thing is really just x plus and this thing is really um, the functions from y plus to y minus this thing doesn't look like a one this is a one okay um, and if you want to compose these two things so if you have a G and a H, and you put them side by side like this. Well, so x plus x minus, y plus y minus, z plus z minus. So the sigmas are going to compose my Cartesian product. And then, given an element of the Cartesian product, then to get this thing, we get a lens from here to here and a lens from here to here, and then we compose them sequentially as lenses. And then the third thing we do this kind of back and forth thing where uh, what we are given is a sigma tau pair, uh, an element of sigma of this and sigma of this, and then we have some, some lens like this and a lens like this, and then we can specialize h given the element of sigma h that we have and then make this composition as a lens and that gives us one of these and one of these which then we can check against the the e relation of g and then similarly for h and then this says okay we if we're in Nash equilibrium at g for this adjusted context and then if we're in Nash equilibrium at h for this adjusted context then overall we're in Nash equilibrium um, I want to give the same definition more precisely again, but in a completely different syntax, completely different diagrammatic language, which is going to come in useful next week. So, and, and okay, one, one thing I should say is that um, these should really be different colors because I'm, I'm, heavily abusing notation there by um, because these things are different sorts of things because these are games and these are lenses. So kind of morally you can, you, you can draw a diagram like this and as long as you're careful it's okay but uh, this thing, the, the diagram itself doesn't literally mean anything in the same sense that the other diagrams do literally mean something. Uh, this is this is just a helpful uh, monomic. Okay, and the reason I wanted to do that is that I'm going to do the same thing again, but for different diagrams. Um, so, if you remember, for lenses there was an alternative, um, an alternative notation, like this, where we had um, x plus y plus y minus x minus and then we have the convention that 
all of the outputs go on the right and all of the inputs go on the left. And all of the outputs, so the most general thing that one of these can be is that all of the outputs are a function of all of the inputs that are strictly to the left of it. So it means that y, so in one of these, y plus is allowed to be a function just of x plus, and x minus is allowed to be a function of both, <coughs> both x plus and y minus. So then we can, we can fill in the inside of this like this. So this is, so the most, the most general thing that one of these can be, in the, if, it's if it's representing a lens, the most general thing that one of these can be is a diagram like this with some function here and some function here. However, um, open games compose in the same kind of way as lenses, although they are not themselves lenses. Uh, so we can also draw these diagrams to represent open games. So, um, and then you can't fill in the boxes anymore. Then these are just some atomic things, diagram elements. And um, instead, of, instead of composing left to right, we compose with this, this inside out, this thing I call bigger fish composition. So, um, Now, suppose we have some open game G, which is going to look like this. <coughs> okay, this is our G, and then we're going to compose it sequentially with some open game H. So that means that we draw it on the inside like this. Now, the context, which previously kind of, well, so you can, you can kind of think of the context as being wrapped around the outside of this. So we have a diagram and then we, 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 we wrap the context around the outside. Uh, it just happens that in the deterministic case, the context ends up consisting of a thing on the front and a thing on the end that don't interact. So it's, it actually de decomposes as an, as an H and a K. Uh, and this is actually a very special feature of deterministic games and pure strategies that we'll see next week. Um, once we're in a probabilistic setting, uh, this doesn't work anymore, and then you have to really wrap something around the outside. Um, in this setting, a context is going to look like this. So it's going to look like a, a three-legged, a three-legged thing that we kind of wrap around this composite. Um, now, again, I'm I'm abusing notation in the same way as here. So the the white parts, so the white parts represent open games, and the orange parts represent lenses. So here, I, again, I want the white parts to represent open games, and the orange parts. So the orange part here, I want to be lens-like. And for lens-like, this is the thing I was just saying, that um, all of the things on the right can be a function of all of the things on the left. And previously, I did that just for, um, just for um, two-legged two -legged things, right? You had a bar and then two legs. But this thing has three legs. But it turns out that if you take that general rule, uh, you actually get the same thing, that this thing reduces back to the thing that we had here. So let me fill in the missing type. So this is a x plus, y plus, z plus, z minus, y minus, x minus. And then on the outside, uh, these are blank. So implicitly, this is 1 and 1. So now you stare at this, and you figure out 
what's the most general thing that the orange thing can be? So this thing is an x plus as a function of 1. So this thing is just an, some element of x plus, and this will be our h. So h, our, our lens here, h, this was actually just an element of x plus. And then here, this is a z minus as a function of both z plus and 1, and this goes away. So this, again, is just some k like this. So this thing is just a function from z plus to z minus, and this is the same thing as this k, this lens here, because uh, so this is, this is a lens from z plus z minus to 1, 1, which is secretly just a function from z plus to z minus. And then on the right, um, we have a function from 1 times z plus times x minus to 1, and there's only one function into 1, which is delete. So all of this goes away. The only thing we can do here is to discard this. So if you take this general rule that um, one of these orange comb, combs, I call these things, like the thing that you brush your hair with, um, that's a term that comes from um, quantum computing, um, that if you take the, the principle that one of these combs, the outputs can be a function of all of the, <coughs> all of the inputs on the left, and then you just work it through, uh, this, is, this is what you get, and it reduces back to the thing that we had. So this is an equivalent formulation. And you can also work out the composition rule this way. So suppose we want to know what is the context of, okay, so I, I showed last week that um, you can get lens composition this way. So um, if, you, if you fill in these two-pronged combs, two-legged two, two combs, two-teethed two combs, I should say, um, with, with the circuit diagram on the inside, this, uh, this thing. And then you do two of them composed like this. and then you join them up like this, then you can read off from this the, the, the correct definition of the, the composite. Um, so, so this deals with, this deals with the, second, the second point of this. Now, to, to check the equilibrium of this, what we would like to do is we would like to check G in, the con in, in this context where H has been specialized to its strategy profile. So, so we, we fix some, some element of the, the we, we fix some strategy profile of H, right? Tau. Uh, because we, okay, I, sh I should slow down. So we are, we are defining equivalently E of this composite. So it's a relation between sigma G times sigma H times the context. Can I ask a dumb question? So yeah. in the, just going back a little bit, in that diagram you've got a backwards arrow pointing into the H. Yes. It doesn't exist in that diagram. This is true. So what does that arrow mean over there? So um, if if you open the box here, so so this is kind of implicit in this isomorphism here. Um, that the lens is into x plus x minus can only be an element of x. Um, so if you, if you open the box here, um, it turns out that the, the only things that you can possibly put in this box are um, some element here, and then here deleting. That's the most general thing you can do. There's, there's nothing other than deleting that you can do with this. Uh, so that's, that's uh, very sensible question. I should have said that. Um, 
And similarly with, similarly with K, um, this thing, the only thing that this can be is some function here wrapped around like this. <coughs> so these, these are the only possibilities. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so somehow the, the isomorphism between this notation and this notation kind of deals with that by magic, that here you have, to, you have a thing which you explicitly need to delete, over here it doesn't even appear, although you get this, you, you get this new thing. I mean, this, this delete here is kind of corresponding to the delete over there. You, everything is turned inside out. So um, when you have a diagram like this, you can kind of think of breaking it across the middle. Um, so all the forwards arrows are on top and all the backwards arrows are on the bottom. And then the forwards part you, uh, sorry, the backwards part you fold down like that. So first you go across and then you go back. And in this side, you just go from left to right. OK. Um, suppose you keep G fixed. but so, so keep G as an open game. But now you fix some. OK, so, so, so we're trying to define E of the composite. So it's a relation between sigma G and times sigma H and the context. So. Um, so we're given a sigma G and a sigma H, and then we want to decide whether the relation holds, define whether the relation holds. Um, so we do this, we, we do the same thing. We, we do this first tests on G and then tests on H, and if it holds in both, then you're in Nash equilibrium overall. Um, <coughs> so what you, what you can do here is you can turn H orange in this diagram by by specializing it to its, um, to its lens form given a strategy profile. So what you can do is, here is G. And then I'm going to turn H orange because I'm now thinking of this as a lens and not an open game. So this thing has been specialized, so it now looks like this. So if you remember back to the very first definition of open games I gave with four pieces of data, there was a play function and a co-play function. So a function from sigma times x plus to y plus and a function of from sigma times x plus times y minus to x minus. If you then specialize to the, to the sigma that we have, um, these, this function and this function are this play and co-play. So this is the function forwards and this is the function backwards. And then we also have the context So this looks like something like this, something like this, something like this. And, and now we think of the whole orange thing as the context of G. <coughs> and from here we can, we can read off the correct definition of, of the new context of G. So. Um, so this, this corresponds under this uh, correspondence between the two notations to this operation of specializing H and then drawing a big triangle around it. So, um, so the, the small H, the history, has stayed the same. This is the thing that happens before G. And then the continuation, this is the kind of uh, local payoff function from, from G's perspective is the actual one and then adjusted by whatever H does given the strategy profile, of, given the strategy profile that we've picked for it. So you do this thing where uh, first you play H and then given the result of that, then you apply the payoff function. That gives you a, an element of this thing. So you need to go from here to here. So 
you play, and then you apply K to get around to here, and then you co-play, and then you get to here. And that's, you can, you can read that off in this diagram. And then similarly for, uh, for H, you do basically the same thing, you flip down, you, you, turn, you turn G orange, and then again, that gives you the, the correct definition of adjusting the context. Okay, um, it's clearly time to not do theory anymore and to work out some examples. Okay. So I haven't yet told you any actual examples of open games, uh, having done all of this theory with vague intuitions. So, um, it turns out that you essentially you need two, two generating families, and then you can, build ev you can build most things you care about from two generating families plus two composition operators, of which I've told you one. Um, okay, I, I, since I haven't done uh, parallel composition yet, I'll come back to that later. Um, so I should, I should build an example uh, based on sequential composition. So I'm going to build a game with three stages. And this is going to be, this is going to represent a two-stage sequential game of perfect information. This is just about the simplest example I can do. So player one makes a choice, player two perfectly observes it, and then uh, and then some payoffs are allocated. So this is going to be player one, this is going to be player two, this is going to, the, to be the utility function, except this is not going to be exactly player two, this is going to be player two together with some necessary plumbing. So uh, what this diagram, what I actually want this diagram to look, to look like is, um, Uh, like this, like this, like this, and like this. So, um, so this says that player one's choice is copied, player two observes a copy, um, and then the other copy goes to the utility function. But in order to define some of the stuff in the middle, I need a parallel composition operator. So what I'm doing, what, what I'm going to do in this example is essentially uh, put this middle part in a box. So this, this box corresponds to this middle part and I'm going to just define this by hand rather than building it compositionally. Um, okay, so player one, player two plus plumbing. Uh, and by plumbing I mean these extra wires and then utility function. So I have three open games to define. Uh, okay, and the, the types of the wires here, uh, so player one is gonna choose some X, player two is going to choose some Y, but the thing that actually gets sent forward is a pair X and Y. Then the utility function is going to hand back a pair of reels, and then this thing is going to pass back only one of them. So player two is going to receive the utility for both players and they're going to pass back player one's utility. Uh, so you can, you can see this in this, in this diagram if I, if I ask what's the type along, along this edge here. Product of the forwards things, x times y, product of the backwards things, these things are. Uh, okay, so I have to define these three boxes. Each of them needs to be given by these three pieces of data. So, so this thing goes from one, one, two, X, R. Okay, so what are the, what are the possible behaviors of P1? Well, I mean pure strategies, so they are elements of X. Uh, sigma of P1 is just the elements of X. The things, that, the things that player one can do is just choose an X. 
Okay. Uh, given some element of x, so given some element of x, we need to um, give a lens from 1, 1 to x reals, which needs to kind of implement that strategy profile as a function. So I need to tell you um, what does this strategy profile actually mean. So when I say the things that we can do are to choose an x, and choosing an x means that we spit out x along this wire. So, well, I could cheat and I could say, well, I know that the lenses from 1, 1 to xr are in bijection with elements of x. So I could say, well, under that isomorphism, I mean just the element of x that we have, because we're given an element of sigma, but sigma is x. Um, but by doing it by hand, um, well, a lens is a pair of functions, so forwards thing is a function from 1 to x, so we're given an element of 1, which is a point, and we need to spit out an element of x, this is going to be this one. So this, so <laughs> crucially here, this, the strategy profiles is the same as this set here, right? This is how we can do this. And then going backwards, we have um, an element of one and an element of the reals, a real number, and we need to spit out an element of one backwards. So this is saying that whatever, whatever comes in here isn't passed backwards, it's just swallowed. Okay. Now, the third thing. So this is the first place you're going to see anything that even remotely resembles game theory. So, given, so, when, when are we in equilibrium? So, this needs to be a set, a set, a, a, a relation between sigma, so, so when is, so when is some triple x star k, in this equilibrium set. So this is to say, when is x, some, some element of sigma, uh, an equilibrium, given the context in which, so the history is trivial because this is just an element of one, there's nothing to say. And then the continuation is a function from x to the reals, because so this is, a, this is a lens from x reals to 1, 1, which is really a function from x to the reals. So here you see this trick. Um, this k ends up being essentially player one's uh, subjective payoff function. They're, they're, just given a, they're just given a real valued function, which they maximize. So when, when we're, in a, we're in a one player setting now, so when is some x an equilibrium given that the payoff function is some function k from x to the reals, well, precisely when x maximizes k. Uh, so, this thing is in x, this thing is a function from x to the reals. And again, this trick only works because Sigma is x. So I define play one to be like this. So this is the point where game theory enters the picture. I, I have the argmax operator uh, built into the definition of P1. And this ends up being one of the generating families. So, or an instance of one of the generating families. So the, the point where real numbers and maximization of real numbers enters the picture is not in the mathematical structure, but in the choice of generators. Um, that's player one, or the box that's labeled P1. Uh, the, box, the box labeled P2 is gonna be very similar, 
So, um, so P2 needs to be some open game from x reals to x times y reals times reals. So, and this needs to encapsulate the behavior of both player two as an agent and also this plumbing. Um, so in the, in the final thing, this, this P2 is actually going to itself be a composite. It's going to be built from more primitive pieces that look like the individual diagram elements here. Uh, but as it is, so the behaviors that P2 can do are going to be precisely the functions from x to y. So these are the, the pure strategies of this agent. So the, the, the behaviors that, uh, that the agent player two can do is to choose a y given an x, so their pure strategies are just the functions from x to y. Um, now, the, the lens part is the part that's going to encapsulate all of this wiring. So, um, so if we're given some element of sigma, which is a function from x to y, we now need a lens of this type. So along the top, we need a function from x to x times y. So along the top, we're given some x, and we need to produce an xy pair. So kind of go back to this diagram to see what it should morally be. We're going to copy x. So the first thing that's output should be just a copy of x. And then the second thing is whatever player two chose, and we know their strategy. So this is going to be x fx. And then on the bottom, uh, here, here I've... Uh, Oh no, this is okay because uh, I did set the convention that backwards things are, cho are read from bottom to top. So um, when I have R times R, the first R is going to be the lower wire. This is player one's payoff. The second one is going to be player two's payoff. Um, so um, here I have an X and then I have a, a pair of real numbers which I'll call U1, U2. And the thing which I'm passing back is U1. Everything else is discarded. OK. Now the third thing. Um, so. Okay, now, this thing is a, is a relation between sigma, so a typical element of sigma is some f, which is a function from x to y, and a, a h, a lens from 1, 1, 2, x reals. So, okay, at this point I'm going to start applying these isomorphisms freely. Uh, and just pick whichever one's convenient for what I'm doing. So an, so an element of this next thing looks just like an X. Uh, sorry, this is now just X. So really this is officially a lens from 1, 1 to X reals, but really we know that it's just an element of X. And then we need a function, sorry, Okay, so we need a lens from x times y, r times r to 1, 1, which we know is really a function from x times y to r times r, which looks suspiciously like a payoff matrix. Right, this is the type that a payoff matrix has. So here you can see that the trick appearing again is that an even though later we're going to specialize to a particular one, at this point we have a general, a general payoff matrix appearing here. Because this, this K is an unknown payoff matrix. Um, so when should this hold? So 
when should some f be a strategy, uh, sh when should some strategy profile f be a Nash equilibrium in the context in which the previous thing that happened was x and the thing that's happening next is k, given that the thing which player two is actually optimizing is the second coordinate, the second real number, so it's the second output of k. So this should be precisely when um, <coughs> f of x, which is an element of y, is in the argmax over all y's of k, x, y, second coordinate. Okay, so again, I'm making this as a definition of, of this P2 box. But later this will emerge from some, from some slightly more primitive pieces. Okay, um, that's two out of three. The third one is simpler. So I'll do it in, in this little gap here. So the third one, this U is an open game from X times Y, R times R to one, one. And the thing about U is that it doesn't contain a player. So most of this definition trivializes because it doesn't contain a player. This is just plumbing. Um, so what that means is that the behaviors of U are, there is only one, which is to be itself, which is to be the utility function. It can't make any choices. The thing that does the work is this, is this lens. So um, given our one element of, given our element of the one element set, we need a lens from x times y, r times r to one, one. And we know that these things are really functions from x times y to r times r. And what I didn't say here is that I've actually picked one. I have, I have my favorite by matrix game. So you can, you can make an actual example. Let's say we want to make prisons dilemma. So you, you pick U to be the actual payoff matrix of the prisons dilemma. And well, okay, I can, I can then write this isomorphism explicitly that on the top, we need to go from x, y to nothing. And along the bottom, we need to go from x, y, nothing to a pair of reals. So this is going to be, right. Um, now the third thing I need to say, when this one element of the one element set is a Nash equilibrium. So if you think back to what I said last week about Nash equilibrium being a negative concept, to fail to be a Nash equilibrium, there must be some player who has incentive to deviate. Um, and this doesn't contain a player. So what I'm saying is that uh, th this thing should always be in equilibrium. This cannot fail to be in equilibrium. Um, so this means that the equilibrium of U of star um, for some for some context um, always holds. Uh, the the more technical reason for this is that is that when we actually defined um, Nash equilibrium for a composite, at some point the logical and operator was used. So you're an equilibrium overall if you're an equilibrium here and you're an equilibrium here. And this true is the, is the, um, is the, is the unit of and, right? So, so as, as long as this is true, it means that it doesn't play any role in that. Uh, if this could be false, then 
this, uh, this component that isn't supposed to do anything can kind of uh, kill everything else. If, if this fails to be in equilibrium, then you're not in equilibrium overall, no matter what else happens. Okay. <sighs> okay. That's the pieces. Uh, now we can compose them. Uh, let's do it here. Okay, so we've got three pieces and I, I hand-waved an argument that this composition operation on open games is associative. So it shouldn't matter if we first compose these and then do this or first compose these and then do this, we'll get the same answer. And at this point it actually becomes practical because some of these compositions are more interesting or easier or, or, or so on. So we want to be able to choose which ones to do. Um, so actually the two different ways that you can compose this uh, end up kind of feeling, they end up having a different feeling. So if we first compose these, then we get this composite that's like player one and player two together and then we just plug in the utility function. If we compose the other way, then this thing ends up looking like this game, but from player one's perspective. So that player two gets folded into this kind of dynamic utility function, which can do different things. Uh, and the associativity says that these will give you the same answer. Um, so that being said, I will do it the left way. So I'll compose P1 with P2. Okay. So we want to do P1 composed with P2. So the first thing is that, so P1, P2 is an open game from 1, 1, 2, X times Y, R times R. <coughs> okay. So the first thing is that I told you that the sigma is composed by Cartesian product. So um, the, the sigmas of P1, P2 are an element of this is a pair consisting of one of these and one of these, which is an x and an x to y. And you'll notice that this is actually the set of strategy, pure strategy profiles of this game, right? A strategy profile is a strategy for player one, a strategy for player two. This is a strategy for player one, this is a strategy for player two. Okay. Now, the, the lens part, so pick an element of this. This is some XF. So we need a lens from 1, 1 to x times y, r times r. And it's going to be the lens composite of this thing. So it's going to be p1 of x, lens composite, p2 of f. OK, so what is this? Well, along the top, so along the top, this is a function from 1 to x times y. So first we apply the function along the top here. That goes from the element of 1 to x. This x is this x, which is this x. That's player one strategy. And then that, and then we apply the function along the top here. So this x becomes this x, and then we do this with this f. This f is player two strategy. So the thing that actually comes out here, so along the top, given star, we get x, f of x. And this is the strategic play of this strategy profile. Um, along the bottom, to do this from first principles requires some work, but we could observe that the very last thing that you need to do, remember you had to do this, this going around trick where you, you go across, then you go backwards on the second thing, and then you go backwards on the first thing. And going backwards on the first thing 
It's just deleting. It's a function into one. So although some non-trivial stuff happens in the second part, it's going to end up getting deleted. Um, so more specifically, um, what would happen is that we get an x, and then we do the backwards thing here. So we take the x that we had here, and then we take a u1, u2, and this gives us u1. And this u1 ends up going into here, and then we delete it. So on the bottom, this is just uh, um, so. Now, now for the part where we have to do real work. So, what are the, okay, the equilibrium relation. So, when does this hold between, okay, so an element of sigma is some xf pair, and then some Context is an H is a H. This is trivial, this is just an element of one. And then the continuation is a function from X times Y to R times R. Again, this looks like an unknown payoff function. Okay. When does this hold? Okay, by definition, this holds when it holds in each of the individual pieces, but for a suitably adjusted context. Okay. So this holds when x is in the equilibrium for P1 of something. Uh, I've just switched notation. X something is in is an equilibrium of P1. And F something is an equilibrium of P2. So these some things are the ways in which you adjust the context. Okay, remember the definition. In order to get this thing, okay, we're in a we're in a setting like this, except that this thing goes away because these are, this is an empty space here, because this, this G comes out of one. So G here is P1, H is P2. In order to test G, we had H stayed the same. This is just star. And then this thing is a lens composite. Okay, so four blackboards is nowhere near enough to store. I need at least double this for all the calculations to work this out, I think. Um, I mean, all, all of the bits of composing this whole game, not just for this one part, fortunately. Okay. Here is the lens. Okay, may, maybe, maybe I should write this more from first principles. Um, so, this thing 
is a lens from one, one, two, one, one. That's why it's trivial, because there is only one. That's why I wrote it to start. This thing is a lens from x times y, r times r, two, one, one. This thing expects a lens, also a lens from one one to one one, but by definition, it is going to be uh, h followed by. No, that's not right. Uh, this thing is just h. This thing is going to be uh, k preceded by uh, p two of f. And this thing is going to be h followed by p1 of x, k. OK. At some point, I did write the definition down actually formally rather than saying it in words or, and, and diagrams. And it looked, it looked like this. So we, had, we, we take this hk and we have a sigma tau, and then we adjust k with uh, playing the second component using tau, and you know, we just h with playing the first component with sigma. That's specializing this back to this, to this particular example. So the next thing we have to do is to work out this and this as lenses. Um, so the, the second one h p1 of x. Um, oh, no, OK, let's do the first one first. So um, the type of p2 of f is a lens from um, x r, x times y, r times r. There we go. This thing is p2 of f, that's a, that's a lens. And then we're composing it with k, which goes to 1, 1. So what is this? Well, as a lens along the top, it does. So this is the thing that gave us the strategic play, and then it deletes it. Along the bottom, OK, so we need to do this round, tri round tripping, this chain rule composition. So given some x here along the top, we get here we get the strategic play. This is x comma f of x, and this f here is the thing that we've plugged in as a parameter here. Then this thing is really encoding a function from x times y to r times r. This is our unknown utility function. So we have this together with an element of 1. And what does this do? Um, so under this, so, so here I need to apply this isomorphism between lenses like this and functions like this. So really, a, a lens like this is just applying some. So if I call this um, k, then this will be like k, k bar. So every k actually has the form k bar for some function k bar. So this is k bar of x, f of x. And here you see we're applying our unknown payoff function to the strategic play. OK, now there's one more thing to do, which is that we need to apply the backwards part of p2 of f. p2 of f passes back player one's utility. So it takes the first projection of this and throws away this and this. 
So what we actually get here is second projection. Okay. That's what this thing really is. Correct. I'm, I'm an idiot. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So this is really a function from x to the reals, right? So our input, so the thing that we actually get is the function taking x to this thing. Okay. Um, the second thing, So here we have um, h goes to x. Uh, so remember this along the top, it picks out some particular h. So this is, so now I should write this as h bar, which is just an element of x. So h is just encoding some h bar. And then along the bottom, it just deletes everything. And then we apply um, P1 of X. So X is, um, wait, did I get this right? I can't have got this right. Ah, I know what I did wrong. Okay, this is not the type. H, H uh, goes from 1, 1 to 1, 1. because initially I wrote this as star and then I backtracked and called it H, but really it's still trivial. Remember, in our general setting, we have two things like this, but in this particular setting, the first thing is like this, which means that there's nothing possible to put there. So um, there is only one possible choice of h here, and then this is p1 of x. And what does this do? Um, well, along the top, we go from one to one, and then this thing spits out x as an element of x. Remember, player one's strategy profiles are elements of x. And then on the bottom, it deletes everything. So this thing ends up being a lens from 1, 1 to xr, which we know are in bijection with elements of x. And the one that is actually encoding is x, which is the, um, an, as an element of sigma the strategy profiles of player one. So we have um, sigma of P1 is by definition X, which is then isomorphic to the lenses from 1, 1 to X real. So all three, all three parts of this are being used here. Okay, so we know what is this and this. Now we can directly apply the definition of these E's. Oh, who can I erase now? Um, I'm going to erase. some of this.
Now, um, what's the next thing? Okay, we need to plug in the definition of these EP1 and EP2. So EP1 is defined by this argmax condition. EP2 is defined by this different argmax condition. So, um, and, okay, so here you see this back and forth thing that this calculation was done by viewing H and K as both lenses, whereas the E's are defined by viewing uh, H and K respectively as points and functions. So I'm going, freely going back and forth as is convenient, but then you have to really pay attention um, and apply, apply the isomorphisms when you need to. So carefully writing down, down where all these things live actually helps. Um, so this EP1 condition holds precisely when, okay, so you see here, um, the middle thing is written as star. Here, the middle thing is written as H. H is a lens from 1, 1 to 1, 1, which is secretly a one element set. So, so H is really star. So the first thing, uh, the condition is that X is in the argmax of this thing. And this was this super, uh, oh, where's it gone? Uh, how to arrange the boards here. Okay, this thing, this thing, this thing. So, um, as, as a function from x to the reals, it's this. Where this k, so where does k come from? It comes from here, it's one of our inputs. So, uh, this thing is that, is an argmax of, so instead of, uh, instead of writing argmax k, I could write argmax over y of k of y. So this is argmax over y of, uh, what have I done? No, sorry, argmax over, okay, write this as argmax over x prime of k of x prime. There we go. That's just different notation for the same thing. Okay, so this is argmax over x prime of k bar. So here I'm, this bar is now, because I've, I've taken k to be a lens from x times y, r times r to one, one, and then k bar is the actual function from x times y to r times r that it encodes. Um, of x prime, f of x prime. And this should look familiar because this is the equilibrium condition for player one. Given that player two is playing the strategy f, this is saying that x1 is optimal for player one among unilateral deviations. Okay. The second condition, this is this EP2 condition, so we now need to plug into this formula here, so this says that um, f of this thing, now this thing is a lens from 1, 1 to x reals, and the element of x that it's actually encoding is this x here. This is this, um, did I erase it? Oh, I erased it, That's, that was this uh, three-way equation. Okay. 
And then, so this should be, um, I made a mistake. I must have made a mistake here because I had to take a first projection somewhere. Where did I forget to take a first projection? Uh, it's because this thing involves a first projection, which I forgot. There we go. There we go. So this is saying player, player one is, k-bar gives us a pair of reels and uh, the first player is optimizing the first one. And this one, this two comes in here, this is, this is by definition. So um, this thing is now x and y and two. So this one, this one is simpler because this one is simpler because the raw definition is doing uh, much more of the work compared to the first part. So. This is equivalent to these two conditions. So this is what, what this E relation turns out to be. Now, okay. So this completes this composition, composition of P1 with P2. So at the moment, K is appearing as this free parameter here in this, in this E relation. So what it turns out is that when we then compose with the third part, this will then specialize that to the actual u that we've chosen, which in this case is prisoner's dilemma just for sake of argument. Um, this is taking about 10 times as long as I thought it would, and I think it's really worth uh, going through all the gory details of this. Um, I, was, I was really hoping next week to say a lot about Bayesian games, but at the rate I'm going, I'll be able to say nothing at all about Bayesian games. Uh, and I've already had to cut repeated games out of the schedule for not having enough time. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I had forgotten how painful it is to do this going down to the raw definitions. Nowadays, I, have, uh, I wrote some code that can do this for you um, because doing these calculations by hand is very, 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 very painful. Um, all, of the, all of the gory details of this are in my PhD thesis, which nowadays I don't even want to look at because it's, it's so disgusting to do all this stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, now, nowadays I just write like more or less theorem, this does the right thing. The, the relation that you get is the actual one given by actual Nash equilibrium. Um, and then just take that theorem as a black box and never think about how it's proved because the proof is so such a nightmare. Um, Okay. Good. So now, now I have composed P1 with P2 and I've got this composite P1, P2. I can now take this as a new atomic thing and I can completely forget about what P1 and P2 individually were. Um, which means now I can erase their definitions and we never need to think about them again because this composite P1, P2 encapsulates the behavior of both of them, which is really good because I can free up some board space. Okay, what did this look like? Um, U is an open game of this type. Um, it's sigmas are the one element set. Um, U of sigma does this. 
And that's it. Okay, good. Now, I want to compose uh, P1, P2 with U. So, do it all again. This time will be much easier. There was much less work this time. Um, if we had done it the other way around, if we had first composed on the right and then composed on the left, the first one would have been easy, the second one would have been hard. Um, maybe that would have been more enlightening, I'm not sure. Um, so the first thing is that sigma of P1, P2, U is the Cartesian product So um, this thing is x times x to y, and this thing is 1, which is I'm pretending that this is still an equality. It's really a bijection. The second thing, here we can we, here we can cheat because okay this, this composite p1 p2 u this is a closed game this is going from one one to one one and um, well there is only one length from one one to one one so we have we have we have nothing to do here some stuff happens. It figures out the strategic play and then it just deletes everything. I, I hand waved this, um, I can't remember which lecture it was in now, uh, probably the first one, um, that an open game from 1-1 one, one to 1-1, one, one, once you plug in the one element set for all of these parameters, uh, this thing becomes the same thing as a, a sigma and a choice of subset. So we're going to get this here. This is going to be this and then we're going to get we're going to get a distinguished subset of this and it's going to be the subset of the Nash equilibrium uh, for the actual u that we've chosen for prisoner's dilemma um, so we'll, we'll see this now um, so here is p1 p2 inside this box we know it's made from two pieces here is u and then we have, here we have H and K. This, these things are both lenses. This is a lens from 1, 1 to 1, 1. This is a lens from 1, 1 to 1, 1. So it turns out that both of these things are trivial. Um, so, Okay, when does this relation hold? So an element here is some, um, is some element of this. And now to be clear, I'll write it in this form. So um, we get some element of this, which is a, an XF pair. This is a strategy profile. And then we get a strategy profile for you. This is just a, just a point. And then we get a context which is this H and a K. And we know that H and K are both trivial. There is only one choice for both of them. If we unwrap this definition, um, yeah. I think for relations, I'm kind of switching between these things as kind of set theoretic notation and relational notation, but I think this should be clear. Uh, this notation means that this thing is in this set. Um, so this holds if and only if the first thing with some context is in, and I've just switched back again. Ah, it's fine. Deal with it. Um, is in this and star something is in E of U 
And now we can save ourselves a lot of work because remember that this E of U was defined to be always true. And these things can be non-trivial. So um, if we did this, if we wanted to suffer, we could first work out um, specifically H. We could, uh, K is still trivial, but we could calculate H um, and then find that it's not used in the definition. So, um, sorry. This should not be if and only if this is and. Uh, so, this, if, this, and this. And the second one is always true, so it plays no role. This is what I mean that the always true thing is the unit of logical and. Um, okay. Now, we have to work out uh, what is this what is this thing that goes here? So we're going to adjust like this. So this H is still going to be the same. And if you remember, this happens in, in here. We get this, this H appearing here, but this is really just trivial. So this trivial H here is the same as this trivial H here. And then this thing is going to be the lens composite of U specialized to the strategy profile we're, we're playing it on, which is star, followed by K, which is trivial. Um, uh, one thing you could notice is that this K, this lens from 1, 1 to 1, 1, is actually the unit of lens composition. So, in fact, that's a, that's a sneaky way of not needing to even think about it. And then this U of star, well, it's a lens like this, which is really encoding uh, encoding this this uh, Prisler's dilemma payoff matrix, um, and so now we're going to plug this into the definition that we derived for EP one P two, which was this, and you see this K, which is a lens here, gets used in its form as k bar, which is its function form. And this u of star, which is a lens of, which is the lens that we're plugging in for k, its function form is u of pd. So in other words, I've arranged it so that u of star bar is u of pd. So u of star is the lens into 1, 1, which represents the function u of pd. <sighs> which means this thing is equivalent to this, but now k bar is specialized to u of pd. <sighs> and that's the end, because um, this is actually the definition of a Nash equilibrium of the prisoner's dilemma. And this thing actually concretely defines a particular subset of the strategy profiles. Um, and I've just realized for the last hour I've been saying prisoner's dilemma, but this is a sequential game, so that actually made no sense at all. Uh, but this was just by way of example. This can be ultimatum game, so. Uh, whatever your favorite example of a, of a perfect information game is. <laughs> that, was, that was embarrassing doing all of this theory and then making a stupid mistake like that. Um, okay. That was, okay. Now you probably get an idea. So <laughs> this, actually means that now I can credibly talk about the slightly bigger picture, which is why do we want to do this? So I've just taken the simplest 
example that I could possibly think of and make it brain meltingly difficult and take over an hour of work. So, um, what's the benefit of this? So, <laughs> here I'm coming back to my, my, my claim is that this scales better, that eventually you will hit some critical scale where this becomes easier than doing it the other way. In particular, if you use software to automate if you, if, you, um, if you use software to automate these operations of kind of applying these isomorphisms back and forth, doing all this, this stuff, um, then once, so writing the software takes a bunch of work. It's actually, it's harder work than doing just one example. Um, but once you've written it, it doesn't care what scale you work at. It doesn't care whether you're doing a two player game or a 100 player game and it works either way. Um, um, whether this pans out to actually be practically useful at um, at um, at larger scales remains to be seen. This is a this is a, a scientific hypo a kind of meta scientific hypothesis that that I have, which I have to back up still, uh, work in progress. Um, this is comparable to, there's, there's a joke in programming in software engineering called uh, uh, Hello World Enterprise Edition. So, uh, so the, first, the first program that, that many programmers learn to write is called Hello World, which prints the string Hello World into your terminal. Um, and Enterprise Edition means doing it the hard way, doing it if you were writing if you were beginning a new code base in Java, which you're expecting to be 100 million lines long, you would build a certain amount of infrastructure, which would be many months of work potentially to build, the, to build that infrastructure before you even get started. So this is kind of a running joke to Hello World Enterprise Edition. This example is like that. This is a super simple thing and I'm building up some crazy infrastructure and it seems like a joke at the end. Uh, the point is that this is demonstrating that the um, that the scaffolding works. Um, so there's a, a guy I know, um, Yellow Herald, showed me a graph, showed me a, a thing that looks like this that he, he uses on his business slides, which says that um, this is normal methods. So this is a graph of scale against difficulty. And normal methods are like this. And <laughs> this, is, this is what we're doing. And then the, the, the question is, um, do you reach, so, so, so the, the scientific question is, um, can you actually reach this point or does something else go wrong first? <laughs> I mean, there, 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 is, there are other barriers other than raw scale. And the question is, do you hit some other barrier before you start to get um, gains from this. Okay, that was exhausting. <laughs> I need to go and have a lie down. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, the one essential thing is that the Nash equilibrium uh, decomposes into like the Composition kind yeah. of the national equilibria in two yes. players. Yes. Yes. But for this to hold, um, one player, uh, like uh, every player, doesn't not have to be in both of the games, right? Because if there's one player in both of the games, meaning that for a deviation yes. would be. Uh, yes. Only yes, there is a way. To, there is a way to, way to deal with this. But you're right that the way I presented it, this uh, this is a problem. Um, so. There's a, a, as a general principle, sometimes you can fix things by adding new operators or new constructions on this, this category, and this is one of the things that you can fix. Um, that's, I mean, that's not a very detailed answer. You, you can start to imagine how, how painful the actual details of questions like this can get. So the, the strategy there is you, you do not allow uh, one player playing in, in two games, but uh, like, 
reformulate the, the setting that uh, this player, like this does not happen? Yeah, so, 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 so what you can do is you can say, this player is not happy if they would like to unilaterally deviate. So, so they're playing the same strategy in two different places. And you can kind of, you pin that, you, you quotient out the fact. So you start by saying these two strategies very freely, and then you kind of do a quotient to pin these down to say they have to be equal. Um, and then you need to adjust your equilibrium condition to say that this, for this player to be happy, they have to not want to unilaterally deviate from, um, from their strategy in either of the two situations. So it ends up being pretty similar. Uh, yeah, repeated games is probably the, the simplest setting where this comes up. In a repeated game, uh, your strategy is a function of the play up to, the, up to that point as a, as a list, and it should be the same function every time. But sadly, I don't have time for that. <laughs> okay.